Hello everyone and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today I have a Christmas card to share with you using the Mama Elephant Fa La La stamp set. So, this adorable stamp set arrived a while back, uh, well actually when it was released, um, and I already used the sentiment on several cards uh, before, uh, but today I'm finally sharing a card where I'm also using these adorable critters that are like singing, um, in this snowy kind of scene that I will create. I will keep this card kind of simple, although I'm going to inkblend a complete background. For me, this still is kind of a clean and simple card. It's a really simple take on a scene card, if you want to say it like that. I'm going to, well, maybe you're just wondering like how do you mean clean and simple if you're going to make a complete card well there are several takes on clean and simple of course uh, and in today's card for me personally i'm using limited resources to create this card but also i'm reusing colors again something that i really love doing but it also creates a kind of a simple card um, i'm going to use like a pinkish reddish color on the accessories of all of the critters they will get the same scarf color um, which is the first step for me to do clean and simple and then for the background I decided to kind of try to recreate that pinkish reddish color in the background by ink blending with my distress inks but I'm not trying to have several colors now this card also can be recreated in so many ways like you can create that gorgeous night sky kind of background with some really deep blues and add a black suit on top if you want to and then splatter it so not having the reddish kind of background is definitely a way to go you can create exactly the same card by doing a nice guy kind of thing or a sunset uh, having rainbow colors on the scarves every scarf a different color truly anything is possible but the layout of this card also is clean and simple, which makes it easy to recreate a card like this, maybe in other colors, but still recreate this card in tons of different ways. Um, and I think personally that is a strength of clean and simple cards. You can recreate it if you want to. Uh, I don't like to do bulk kind of things um, or doing exactly the same because I personally am not an assembly line. Um, <laughs> I am a human and I need to have my creativity flow. Uh, but for me, if I need a card, like, or if I need more cards and I'm going to get at a certain point uh, limited in time to, to create something, um, I know that with clean and simple cards, you can really easily make them. And for me, something that helps me in that case is to really try to find different colors, find different pattern papers if you use papers, um, make it a shaker if you can uh, to keep it still a bit like you need your creativity you know it's not already done and you're just recreating exactly the same that for me is a no-go for me personally I don't get any well I cannot relax that way or it doesn't bring me to my happy place um, but changing the color already helped me in the past to create multiple cards um, in limited time. So I'm here coloring my fox. In case you want to uh, revisit color combinations, as always, you can find them on my blog post. And there is a link in the description box towards my blog post. So that's all there for you if you need to. Um, but normally, if you have been here for a while, you already recognize kind of the colors that I'm using. For the bear, I'm using a different color combination. I haven't used the E70 markers a lot yet, um, but I had a few and then it works with the E57, which I do use quite often. Um, so yeah. Also, this pinkish reddish combination is one that I think I uh, noticed last year by someone or just by accident but I think someone helped me with this gorgeous combination um, and I haven't used it in a while so changing that sometimes you kind of have your your favorite combinations but I'm trying here as well 
that I'm sharing with you. I'm trying to sometimes go a bit outside my comfort and trying to find other combinations because we don't all have the same markers. And from time to time you just want to, to use a combination and if you don't have the markers it's just a bummer. Uh, so I'm trying all the time to also go a bit in other directions with the markers that I have. Uh, but don't forget about your favorite combinations that you have. Maybe just write them down on a piece of paper to just remind you if you need pink or red or green, you can use that or that or that. So I'm going to die cut these three cuties and then I will create my background. Now for my background, I took the basic rectangles from my elephant. I also took these slimline snow drifts from my favorite things and I um, die cut actually two times the basic rectangles and then I used the second basic rectangle to die cut the slimline snow drift so that I would also ha have those stitching details on the bottom of my card. Now I'm going to create my um, background gradient. I ended up using uh, sponge sugar, worn lipstick, aged mahogany and black suit distress ink. There are also distress oxide inks if you prefer ink blending with them. Uh, but I don't. Well, I like it. I have them. I'm going to get rid of them because I haven't used them in two years. Maybe they all dried out. Um, I love the oxides as well. They are more forgiving. But I prefer like that bright end result from the stress inks. Um, I cannot explain it really. Um, either you love it or you don't, <laughs> I think. But I don't like the chalky look. Um, so I know that they are more forgiving and the stress inks will take a bit more time to ink blend. Um, but I think that's worth it. So uh, I haven't used my oxide so long. They are just taking up space and I'm, I'm going... Uh, well, I, I have been contemplating like to sell them Europe-wise. Um, but just all. You take them all or you take none of them because I need to get rid of all of them. Uh, so, but then shipment wise it will not be handy until I haven't done that yet. But I'm kind of losing my patience, I need more space for my paper. So here, on my uh, tiny snow drifts, I wanted to have just a bit of a shadow and then I realized that I hadn't masked off my edges. So my stitching details that I really love having white weren't white anymore. And this paper isn't as forgiving for water as others. So otherwise you can kind of lift up that color with uh, water hmm? because it's reactive. Uh, but this paper cannot handle it. So my only option was to do a white jelly roll pen and really go over that edge. Uh, so I did that and then for my bottom... Uh, snow drift I realized that I had to mask off my edges so I did so just did that adding a tiny bit of that sponge sugar and then I have all my background pieces ready now later on I want to splatter my background with um, white gouache to represent snow um, but I want to do that once the images are on top because the snow can also go on top of the images if they are standing in the snow um, so I first removed everything and then later on, once everything is assembled, we will do the splattering. So to adhere everything, I'm going to play a bit with dimension. I have a foam sheet here uh, to help me. Um, I will use a second one on the small snow drift. So that is two different heights. Later on, we need to remind ourselves of that when we are adhering our critters on top of our panel. Because otherwise they will go a bit wonky and we don't want that. Um, so I'm going to make sure that my snow drift here is placed well. I'm really horrible at placing things while it's standing up. Tons of crafters do it and I thought it was going to help me. But I think it's already the second or third time that I'm trying this and that I'm actually ruining placement. So I need to really focus on one edge and then press it down and have it straight. You can use your misty as well if you want to have a guideline. But for me it truly helps to just focus on that one border and then making sure that it is aligned and the rest will be just fine. 
So as I said, when you're adding your critters, you need to take into account the height that you already have where it's standing on. Uh, so every area where uh, it's not overlapping with my border, I need to add some foam. The same height, so I'm using the same adhesive. I just fiddled a bit to get that in place. Um, just the same kind of foam paper here. And then for the bear, I needed to take into account that the head was two heights that I needed to cover. So I'm just adding two of these pieces on top of each other to have it fit with the borders that we added to our panel. For the fox and the penguin it's just one and then the area where it's overlapping with the snowy hills I'm just going to use some liquid glue and that's how they will be put on there and the height will ju be just perfect like that. The same for the other two. And then we will splatter with some white gouache. So um, for the white gouache, I actually decided to um, to use my acrylic block here. This one, it's going to be used for a white gouache only. It's just going to have this purpose now uh, because I was every time cleaning off the white gouache. Um, and I realized that I actually was throwing away every time again my white gouache. So now I have this acrylic block only for this purpose. And um, I can just add water, reactivate it, or I can add more gouache if I don't have enough. Um, add some water and then reactivate the rest that I still had on it and just not throw anything away. And I think it was a nice decision. The only thing is that I don't have a lot of acrylic blocks, so I will have to at a certain point get more to help me because it's really handy to put on top of things that you glue down to keep it in place, to keep it flat and stuff like that and I don't have a lot of them. So, splattering all over also on the critters because they are singing in the snow and then for the sentiment I decided to take out the whimsies whimsy alphas from mama elephant and i just die cut christmas um, i'm going to align them straight and then add it uh, to this panel now i needed to take care of the white gouache that was still wet um, so i ended up using my craft mat here to align the christmas on top and i did it above my panel to make sure that the width of my placing or my spacing was was just right to fit on my card so I used my, um, well, how is it called, triangle kind of thingy here to align everything straight. And then I'm going to use some purple tape to lift this up all at once. And then I can later on place it exactly straight on top of my card panel. So I'm just using some liquid glue. And then, as I said, I'm going to use some acrylic blocks, well, one, I think, um, to keep it flat on there, to let it dry, let it set a bit. Um, and if I had enough of patience, then it would have been stuck completely. But of course, I always start removing it, even when it's not stuck yet. So I'm lifting it up a bit, but I'm keeping it down at the same time with my fingers. So that is my sentiment. And I really love it. Um, next, just embellish a bit. There are already snowflakes with the gouache, but I ended up also adding some snowdrift sprinkles from Little Things from Lucy's Cards because it's a really cute embellishment. Um, I also used it on other cards that I made, uh, so you will definitely see that return. Um, they are really fun to use. It's like the heart sprinkles, but then perfect for Christmas. Uh, if you want to, you can definitely add heart sprinkles here as well, because it's adorable. Uh, but I ended up with the snowdrift. So I took my time to really fiddle with placement, uh, where did I want what, uh, making sure that it was a bit more balanced out. It, took, it really took some time. It wasn't working out as I wanted it. Um, so yeah, just fiddle with it. Keep fiddling with it. If it doesn't work, step away, return. Um, ask around if you have someone at home that is kind of good with design 
wise things. Uh, you can ask around, ask your crafty friend if you're unsure. Um, for me, when I'm when I'm filming, it's really hard to ask a crafty friend, and I must admit that the hubby here, like, no, it's not really a great help. I don't know if it's the same where you're living, uh, the people around you at the house, but whenever I'm asking design-wise whether it works he's like yeah it works um he doesn't really look uh or he's like trying to have everything symmetrical and i think after seeing my videos that you know that symmetrical isn't the way it works or at least not for me so every time that he's like suggesting that i'm just adding exactly the same on the other side i'm i'm thinking about having a mental breakdown I don't know what he's thinking in his head and whether he really looked at my cards in the past. But he isn't a great help. He tries, or not even, but no. <laughs> so I love him, but not for helping me with cards. So I'm just adding my panel on top of my card base. I'm going to finish this card off using some glossy accents. You can also use some stickles. I love using that on scarves, uh, but since they are all holding the paper, like it would have been a bit too much for me personally. So I just added glossy accents on the lamp and then on the two noses, and that's going to be my card for today. A really simple, still kind of um, simple scene-wise card um, using the Falala stamp set from Mama Elephants. I hope that you enjoyed this video and of course that you like the end result, that I could inspire you in any way. Please let me know if I did. I love seeing your creations. Um, thank you so much for being here. I truly appreciate you all and I'll be back soon with some new craft inspiration. Bye!